the challenge of the Yukon. On King! On you, Husky! The Wonder Dog King, swiftest and strongest of Eskimo lead dogs, blazes a trail through storm and snow for Sergeant Preston as he meets the challenge of the Yukon. Sergeant Preston was typical of the small band of Northwest Mounted Police who preserved law and order in the new Northwest country, where the greed for wealth and power led to frequent violence and bloodshed. But in spite of the odds against them, Sergeant Preston and his wonder dog king met that challenge, and justice ruled triumphant. In a small town in Indiana, Cora Raymond put down the letter she had read for the fifth time. She smiled slyly as she looked across at her husband, Jim, who had entered the house wearily a few minutes before. He was a man about 50, and a worried frown deepened the wrinkles in his forehead as he removed his shabby shoes. Oh, oh it's no use. I can't find work. They want younger men. Well, I've been wanting to get away from you for a long time, anyhow. You're nothing but a weakling, and I'm not sticking with you any longer. Oh, I see. It's because I'm not rich any longer. All you ever wanted was my money. Maybe that's true. Might as well tell you to your face. So now you're doing the same thing you did with your first husband, Sam. Leaving me now that my money's gone and most of it's spent on you. Sam was just as dumb as you. The poor fool was in love with me. Poor Sam. He must have hated you later. Hated me? Oh, no. Cora? I know you for what you are, a mean, selfish, extravagant woman. You haven't a shred of loyalty or honesty in your makeup. And Sam must have known it. Well, if Sam hated me so much, why did he think of me just before he died? He... he's dead? Yes. This letter came today from Whitehorse, up in Yukon country. Sam discovered gold up there, and he's leaving me a fortune. I, I can't believe it. After the way you the poor him. idiot. It all came about because of what I said to him, about never looking at his stupid face again, as long as I lived. But I can't understand. I, I don't... All right, it. listen. I'll read part of this letter to you. You will receive this letter after I am dead. I discovered gold here in the Yukon and have saved over $200,000. Your last words to me were that you would never look at my face again as long as you live. But I've determined to make you break that vow. I never loved any woman before I loved you. And I hated all women after you left me. You never loved anything but money. So I'm using money to bring you back to me. Under my head, when they bury me, will be a map showing where my fortune is. The map will be in a sealed envelope with your name on it. How you will get it is your problem. But I'd advise telling no one, as a woman is a helpless thing in the Yukon. So you see, Cora, you will look upon my face again. <laughs> the fool! Does he think keeping a vow is as important as $200,000? You? You mean that you're going up there? Certainly I am. I'll dig him up myself if I have to. For money like that. But it will cost a lot to go up there. Railroad fare, the boat, and living up there is expensive. Well, I might as well tell you. I've saved almost enough. It's in my name, and you can't touch it. You mean money I gave you? You were such an easy mark. It wasn't hard to get it out of you. I knew when I married you I wouldn't be able to stand you very long, so I saved it. I'll have enough to get up to the Yukon in style and live there until I dig up sentimental sand. You'll never see me again. I'll never have to look at your stupid face as long as I live. At Pierre Ledoux's trading post, Pierre was talking with a woman at the counter. But that is what I must charge, madame. How much are your shovels and pickaxes? Well, here they are. You want them for now? Your husband is minor? I have no husband. I want them for myself. But, madame, the ground, it is hard, like ice. You cannot... Will you pick... please mind your own business? Uh, sorry, madame. Uh, here is good pickaxe. Oh, hello, Sergeant Preston. Hello, Pierre. 
Oh, get away from me, you beast. Black King, here, grab that pickaxe. Madame, no, you mustn't. That dog was not hurting you. Get him away from me, then, the ugly beast. Stop that, King. I'm sorry if he frightened you. I'm sure he wouldn't have hurt you. I don't like dogs. Are you a policeman? This is Sergeant Preston of the Northwest Mounted. Oh. Have you been around here very long? Yes, quite a few years. Did you ever know my husband, Sam Bates? I knew him about as well as anyone did. Are you his wife? I'm his former wife. My name is Raymond now. Me, I know Sam Bates also. He did his trading here. Sergeant, you can help me, I think. Do you by any chance know where Sam is buried? Well, I have a vague idea. I... I want to visit his grave. It may be rather hard to find. He's buried out near his cabin, about three miles out of town. Slade Wilson and Jake White bury him. They could tell you... Never mind. The sergeant will help me. Can you take me to Sam's grave right now? Yes. I'll see you later, Pierre. All right, Sergeant Preston. Must that dog come with us? Of course. Come along, King. (laughs) Pierre Ledoux was telling the latest gossip to two men the following afternoon. Slade Wilson and Jake White listened intently. Me, I tell you this because you helped to bury Sam Bates. This woman, she is the worst woman I've ever seen. No wonder, Sam, he was bitter man. I never knew he'd been married. Such a temper she has. Yesterday, she almost killed Sergeant Preston's dog with pickaxe. What was she doing with a pickaxe? <laughs> that is funny thing. Today, she come in and buy one. Pickaxe and shovel. <laughs> Maybe she will dig up poor old Sam to scold him. <laughs> Wait, there is customer. I come back in a minute. What do you make of it, Slade? He must know where the money is. And he must have had plenty. Well, we sure combed the place out there. There wasn't so much as a grain of gold dust anywhere. Why did he want to know where he was buried, do you think? Slate, that's it. It's in his grave. But we buried him. We'd have found it. He could have had the map in his clothes or something. But why wouldn't he just send it to her? Maybe he just wanted to make it hard to get. And ain't a pleasant thing to do digging someone up. Maybe we could give the little woman some help. Yeah. <laughs> Good idea. Look at that turn out. Help me, somebody. I'm so cold. My hand. Uh, let's see it, ma'am. Uh, sit down here. Uh, I'm so tired. I've walked miles. And this hand. Oh, you froze it. And all the skin is off. As if you've been digging. I realize now. I'm going to have to have help. The ground is frozen solid. Did either of you know Sam Bates? Know him? Why, we were his best friends. We buried him. You, you did? Have you a dog team? Oh, yes, ma'am. It's right outside. That hand, madam. You should rub some snow on it right now. I can see from here it is frozen. Hey, it can wait. Come on, you two. I'll pay you well. I want a job done at once. Right. But, Jake, she should... I've asked you of... before to mind your own business. Wait, oui, madam. Here it is. Here's where I started to dig. It's Sam's grave. This is where we buried him. How long will it take? Oh, not too long. You'd better go inside Sam's cabin, Mrs. Raymond. No, I'll wait here. You're waiting in the cabin, I said. How dare you talk to me like that? I'm hiring you to do as I say. And I'm telling you what you're going to do now. Come on. I won't. Take your hands off of me. Come on, Clay. Bring that rope and give me a hand. Come along and we'll carry you. What? Are you dirty cowards? What are you going to do? We're going to tie you up and leave you here for a while. No, I'll pay you. I'll give you half of what we find. Well, there is something to find. You were right, Jake. Open that door. Right in you go. <laughs> Sit down in this chair. Sleep. Tie your feet. Yeah. I'll get her hand. I, I'll freeze to death. I've lost a mitt in my hand. You won't need a mitt. You filthy thieves. You yellow cowards. I'll have your hand for this. No, no, you won't. Tomorrow someone will find you frozen stiff. Lying on the grave with a husband you couldn't live without. No, no, please. <laughs> hey, put a gag in her mouth, Slade. I hate screaming. Let me go. I'll give you all Sam's gold. Stop. Stop. Sergeant Preston entered Pierre's store long after Cora had left. Pierre, as usual, was agog with gossip. Sergeant, that crazy woman, she was here once more. She come in like wild. Her hand, it is froze, but she will not stop or fix it. She take Jake White and Slade Wilson. They all run out to dig something. Jake White and Slade Wilson. What a pair to pick. She does not know they are not so nice. You say her hand was frozen? Oui. 
I try to make her fix it, but she almost spit at me. Well, doesn't she know? She ought to tend to that at once. She might lose her hand. Well, King, in spite of the fact that we don't like her, it's our duty to help her. Sacre bleu. I am glad it is you and not me who will tell that wildcat what to do. As Sergeant Preston drove up, Jake and Slade were lifting Sam's coffin from its icy resting place. There it is. Hey, Jake, look. Sergeant Preston. Let me handle it. Don't say nothing. Working! Hello, boys. What's this? Oh, hello, Sergeant. If we're just doing a favor. Sam's wife wanted us to dig oh. him up for some reason. Where is she? We left her at her place in town. Her hand was froze. She's coming out later. I'm glad she's taking care of that hand. That's why I came out. What is it, King? What's that you have? Give it to me. Why, it's a mitten. A woman's mitten. Jake, you're lying. Where is she? Why, you... Oh, my hand! Get that dog away from Open me! your hands, both of you. Good work, King. Watch him, fella. You should know not to pull a gun on me with this dog around, Jake. Yeah, you have no gun, Slade. All right, both of you, put your hands out. I'm handcuffing you. All right, King. The smitten boy. Find her. Oh. So she's in the cabin. I didn't think you'd be so obvious. All right. Walk ahead of me, both of you. King, watch these men, boy. In you go. Yeah, that dirty cur. This is Raymond. Well, you're alive, anyway. I'll loosen this gag and cut you free. Oh, thank heaven you came. Oh, my hand. It's numb. Her hand is completely frozen. We'll have to get you to town at once. Did, uh, did they get Sam's coffin? I was just taking it out as I came. You can come back tomorrow. No, I can't leave it. Come on, someone might... Come on, help me. Mrs. Raymond, come back. Watch these men, King. Don't let them move. Mrs. Raymond, you must listen. I have to know. I won't go. I want to get that map, whatever it is. I don't care about my hand. All right. I'll open it for you. Here's a hammer. At last. After all I've been through. All my money nearly spent. Just one more nail. There. There you are, Mrs. Raymond. Sam. Sam, his face. It's changed. No, that's how he looked when he died. The cold preserved him. Paper. It's under his head. Oh, this is terrible. Here. Here it is. Open it for me. My, All right. my hand. I put this under Sam's head after he died. It was his last request. Here you are. Give it to me. Why, what's this? No. No, it can't be. What's wrong? Let me see. He said it would be a map showing where his fortune was, showing where he put his gold. Oh, I guess that's just what it is. It's a map of Indiana, and beside this mark, he's written the name of an orphanage. That's where Sam left his money. On King! On you, These copyrighted dramas originate in the studios of WXYZ Detroit. And all characters, names, places, and incidents used are fictitious. They are sent to you each week at the same time and reach you from our transcription studios. Hal Neal speaking. This is the Michigan Radio Network.